you against Marcus Rashford? It's going, to, it's going to be a tough battle. You know, I'm relishing the challenge but to play against him. Every single second, I need to be alert. I need to be switched on. Is that a Casemiro or party? No. I don't know. It's a tough one. I play against Casemiro, but I've also played with Thomas. Where, where's Declan sitting there? You're going to get a lot from the comments, Kieran. I'm not even going to lie That's to you. You're going to get a lot. Out. It's a massive shout, yeah, but I love it. I love that. They can never do it like I. When you see man pull up and slide. Man stepped in a room with legends. Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe. Check the podcast, what you want to know. Don't ask me. Go and ask Joe. If you're you're talking Premier League, he's on the front line and I gotta go. Oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. Vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know this. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this special episode of Vibe with Five. You've got here myself, Joel Bayer, Stephen Housen, Rio Ferdinand, and the one, the only, Newcastle's very own, Mr. Kieran Trippier. How you doing, bro? You good? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Life's good. You, you already know what it is. I don't need to say too much. Today, we could be friends. We'll figure out everything else afterwards. But Rio, I'll let you kick off with this interview. Uh, really looking forward to this, man. Top player in our hands today. Yeah, man, Mr. Kieran Trippier, first and foremost, thanks for coming on. We've been trying to get him on for a while. He's um, he's the insight into to Newcastle, man. And this guy, obviously, we have to give you your flowers when you come on, man. Technically ridiculous. A fantasy fantasy football team manager's dream right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you doing anyway? How's life up in Newcastle? Let's we'll start there where it's exciting times at the moment in the Carabao Cup final. No, it's good. It's been, um, it's been a good season, but... You know, as a team, we haven't really like achieved anything yet. Obviously, we're in a final, we're in a, a good position in the league. But um, yeah, you know, obviously delighted. Clubs, good, good feeling around the city with the supporters. Um, just everyone connected, really. And mm. yeah, and I feel like we're showing that on the pitch. And hopefully, there's more to come. Well, what's it been like there working with? Like, obviously, the team, but the fan base is crazy. The fans, obviously, you've played there. On opposing teams, I've played. It's like the fans are brilliant. Win, win, lose or draw, they're fantastic fans. And also, give us a bit of insight into into actually how you even managed to end up at Newcastle. Do you know what? Like before I even came here, um, I didn't realize, you know, how like obsessed and passionate they are until you live in the city. Um, and obviously, I can only go back to my first game against um, Cambridge in the cup uh, when I first signed and a sellout. Um, and it's been like that ever since. And when I first came here, it was I made it clear obviously when I was in Madrid that you know if an opportunity opportunity came in um, the summer before I left that I'd want to come back to England. Um, I think it was straight after the Euros. Um, and you know it, it didn't happen then, but obviously you know I had my family and stuff, and you know I had a couple of issues when family was sort of struggling a little bit, and you know Newcastle came in January. Um, and I wanted to move back up, back up north. Um, like I said, I had a couple of offers somewhere like down south and abroad and stuff. But you know, it's important I got my kids and, and my wife back to the north of England again. Mm. Want to take it back a little bit further? Sorry to interrupt, Rio. Uh, obviously, you've grown up in the Man City Academy. You started there at the age of nine, right? Yeah. From then on, are you are you seeing yourself as being a footballer or is it just a hope and a dream one day? Because at the time, forgive me if I'm wrong, but obviously United's still the main team in the, in the city. What, what's your thoughts? Yeah, obviously, I was, I was actually at United when I was, before I went to uh, in the academy, trained at the cliff. My granddad used to take me in that and um, yeah, at that age, it's just like all my friends, about three of my friends went to City and at that age, you just want to, you're only a young kid, aren't you? Um, and yeah, it, it was it was good going through the youth system. We had a good um, Jim Cassell, Alex Gibson, Paul Power. We had a really good youth set up there. They really took care of me. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think it got to about when I was about 16 when I got my YTS when I really wanting to knuckle down and become a footballer. Um, but before then, it's all just about obviously enjoying it. And had the right people around me, you know, the, the coaches that I just named then and even the players we had in the team as well. It was it was a unbelievable... Was you, Kieran, was you one of the one, always ones that they thought would definitely make it or did you have some like moments where you thought, I don't know if this is going to be the one for me, I'm not sure if I'm, I've got a chance or, or was you always that one that was always going to get there? I, I always believed that I could because I had the, the obsession because of my older brother when he was at Oldham and he played quite a lot of games in the Football League and 
you know, when I used to always go and watch him train, play games, and that's what motivated me really to to, to want to play the game. And and yeah, you know, I, I never, you know, I always believed in in my ability when I got to like 16, 17, and, and it's just all about getting that pro contract and then you know trying to trying to push yourself on really and trying to and trying to develop to become a professional footballer. Hmm. Was you always a fullback, or did you play uh, in mid 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 that? Yeah, centre mid. Everyone starts in centre mid, man. Everyone, yeah. Makes sense. No, centre midfield and then right midfield, and um, we had a guy called Alex Gibson, uh, my my youth team coach, and he decided me to try me at right back once in um, the year we won the youth cup, and from then on I just started playing right back, and you know I wouldn't be in the position today if it wasn't for for, for his decision that day, and that says everything about the coaches we had there. It was unbelievable, unbelievable the amount of players that they brought through. Um, obviously, mm. they're not there no more, but yeah, I've got a lot of. Uh, a lot of thank yous for that. All, all, all my old coaches, of course. Yeah, everyone I speak to, Kieran, who talks about you, they, and I ask the questions obviously when we knew we were going to interview you, is like, what's he like as a, as a, as a player, as a person, etc. And one of the main things that comes up is hard work. He's hard working, he's diligent, he w takes care of all the details, um, he's a, a leader within the group, a talker. Um, have you always been like that as a kid, or is that something that's developed over the years? No, I feel like going through like, the youth system and stuff, I've always been one of those characters. You know where I like to talk a lot on the pitch, and I've you know been one of the banter in the dressing room and stuff, you know, <laughs> making sure everyone's all right and having having fun and stuff. But um, I feel like where it took me to another level where I matured much more is when I was working with Simeone. Um, you know, I've, I learned so much off him in the two and a half years I was there on and off the pitch. Um, like unbelievable what? Manager. Just like leadership. Um, you know, I think it was clear that. I needed to improve my defending the, the, when I was leaving Tottenham, uh, and there was no better manager. You know, he's he's relentless. He worked me for hours on my own. You know, after training, uh, just little positions where I can pick up. But most importantly, it made me mature even more. And it was important that I learned, you know, different culture, different style of play, um, philosophy, the way he wants to play. And I felt like I came back to the Premier League like more mature player. You know, you're going to jump around a little bit here, but I just I, when I catch something in a in a, a conversation, like you just mentioned something, I can't help but ask it. But you just spoke about when you, you knew your defending had to improve. We've got defenders yeah. in this country, um, great with the ball, etc., but being called out at times, but defensively and can improve in those areas, especially with the way the fullback position has kind of evolved recently. What, what what's that like when you're getting questioned and people are throwing at you in the media? And questioning your position in teams because of uh, a frowty maybe in your game. Yeah, do you know what? I think it was when the World Cup 2018. Um, you know, there's a lot of I was in the media quite a lot, and you know, people saying how good a World Cup I had. And at that time, I didn't didn't really know how to handle that. Maybe. Um, and then the first half of the season, I felt like I'd done well, but then the second half, it's like a car crash really, and I was getting questioned in the media getting criticised, you know, when I was taking a corner, when I was at Tottenham, probably sections of my own fans booing me and stuff. And it's not nice, but mm. yeah, it's maybe in that moment, I didn't know how to deal with it. You know, I didn't, I didn't really want to speak to anybody about it. I didn't want to feel like embarrassed by speaking out. Um, and it was tough, that second half of the season was tough, but I was getting picked for every game by Pochettino still. And it's not like I was going into every game not giving hundred percent of work, but I was just giving silly mistakes away. The one that I gave away at Wembley when Marcus, I think Marcus scored and we got beat one nil at Wembley. Um, I scored an own goal against Chelsea. It was a great finish. <laughs> <Past the laughs> uh, I was there, I think that game. Yeah. Do you know, I was, I was just saying to myself, go back to basics, you know, but mm. honestly, that, that, that back end of the season was just a blur from being honest with you. Did you get into that? Well, you get into a rut sometimes where, like, every single little mistake gets punished. Like, and when you're yeah. in a good time, you, you make a mistake and you, you get away with it because it doesn't get punished. Is that how you felt as well? 100%. And every when I was playing the ball into midfield and getting intercepted, they would score. And I just nothing was falling for me, you know, it was difficult. And like I said, mm. scoring the own goal and everything was just going against me. And yeah, things didn't help, you know. Um, I was hearing rumours like obviously I was going to leave and stuff and you know things happening behind the scenes at Tottenham and stuff that didn't help of course 
and then you know it just got. I just couldn't wait for the season to end, and I wasn't in the England squad for the Nations League. But it's just all about regrouping and you know trying to overcome these these challenges because I guess you certainly had them in your career. I have as well. So it's how it's how you deal with them, and you know if it ever happened again, I would know how to deal with it. Hmm. Even though he had less left a few seasons prior, a couple of seasons prior. Did you feel like the pressure to uh, to fill Kyle Walker's boots at any time? No, I didn't feel pressure because I was at Burnley and then when we got really, I knew I wasn't going to play. I knew, but it was a great opportunity for me, one that I couldn't turn down. Um, you know, back then when I was at Burnley, I was playing, I was going out quite a bit, you know, and I knew I needed to go out a very my area where me and my, my fiance at the time just went down in our row. And I think that was the best decision I made where, it was on our on our own. I got out in the area. Sorry, did you say you were going out a bit? Yeah, I was like going out a little bit, you know, drinking and stuff. Um, and it was important that I got out of the area, you know, and went down to London. And it was an opportunity that I couldn't turn down. And I knew Hawks was there, but um, you know, Tottenham Champions League football, Europa League at the time, and Premier League, and to test myself. You know what? I think it's that, that, that self awareness is important. I think it, having self awareness is to f- highlight in a moment and saying, you know what? I need to get away from here to stop that, which was the drinking and going out culture. Yeah. It's an important moment. Do you look back at that and go, you know, but that might have been a pivotal moment in my life? Yeah. Looking back now, it was it was the best decision. And to be fair to Sean Dyche as well, it was a massive help for me in, in, this, in, in that. Um, really took care of me. Um, made me realise of what I could achieve and if I knuckle down and he was brilliant with me. Um, but yeah, that, that was one moment where I look back and I think I'm so happy I did that. I'm so happy I moved down to London. It was the right time. Mm. Mm. Steve? Yeah, I got, I've just been writing stuff down as you've been talking here I, and Rio's obviously mentioned, I'm going to, I'm going to flip you back to Simeone. What does a Diego Simeone training session look like? Cause it seems to be one of the best drilled teams in world football how much of it is just walking around and pointing at different spots on the pitch? Yeah, he, he takes everything. We have Simeone and a fitness guy called Profi Ortega is called. Um, you know, we could be playing on a Saturday, but we do tactical every day of the week. But it's one of those where <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it. You know, people from the outside might say, oh, it's boring football. And I think you was commentating, Rio, when we played Liverpool at Anfield when we, when we won. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it was Owen who was saying, "Oh, it's boring football," and you know, sometimes you you have to. Play I that said, that, that, in, in our defence, I said, yeah, "Listen, you've you got to respect it. You've got to yeah. respect that." And I understand what people people say, but once you're actually in his presence every single day, you realise like how good he is. Um, mm. But I, I look back and I think the players that we have, what well, they had there, yeah, you, you can play better, but. He has his own way, he has his own philosophy, but I loved it. I, I loved just learning off him, like the defensive side and positioning and something that I needed to improve myself as well. So for mm. me, it was brilliant. Did he, did he ever get after you? Was he, was he one of those who come in at half time and like bang, like get oh, yeah. someone? And, was he? Yeah, 100%. He, he's one of those managers where he doesn't care how good you are, he doesn't care how much you cost. You know, if, you're not, if you don't run, you know, you're not going to play. Uh, I've seen him drag, I think it was Luis Suarez, I think it was after, I don't know, 35 minutes, I think it was. And he's hooked me off once after AC Milan away. I think it was like 40 minutes, no, come off. I didn't have the best game, I, I admit that, he's a come off. So he's one of them where you don't want to argue with, do you know what I mean? And you respect him, you know, everybody respects him in Spain. One thing that he said or changed in your game that, that you've kept hold of, what would you say is? I think my... My, my more understanding of defending and you know sometimes I was rash I wanted to jump in and I was attacking too much when I was at Tottenham and I was getting exposed in behind and it's just about timing uh, my positioning I think my positioning most importantly um, cause like I said when I was at Tottenham I was getting exposed too much by going forward too much and my 1v1 defending um, my body shape when it's on the other side and things like that I think it's my whole defending package I feel like is improved of course, there's still so much to learn, but like I said, like I said before, I feel like I come back to the Premier League, you know, more mature player and my attacking and my defending. Is, is there video? Is there, there looking back at yourself, analysing yourself on tape and stuff like that? Is that a big part of it as well? Or are you more of a on the grass doing it there? 
No, I'm, 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 you know, full hands on on the pitch. Uh, but I'm always, you know, as as I've got older, more watching, watching games back, watching my clips back more, and yeah, you know, always asking questions. Um, and you know, they had a really good understanding there. And you know, I, I spoke to Docker the other day as well about how much he'll enjoy his defending and you know the, the mm. whole city and stuff, and uh, to give him an insight, help him. Um, and that's important as well that he's got someone to lean on. You know, playing abroad, it's not mm. easy. You know, the culture, going out your comfort zone, but not unbelievable experience. You know, two and a half years, yeah, and, you know, something I'll look back on forever. Mm. You've played with some quality players in the Atletico Madrid team, uh, Morata, Suarez, uh, Party. Can you oh, tell me what that? Yourself. No, it's the truth. What did he say offline, Steve? Go on, Kieran, <laughs> tell him. What did you say? Go on. No, I said that Thomas obviously is a quality player. You know. Uh, then you mentioned Casemiro, so that's your debate. Yeah, yeah exactly. Who's, yeah, better, I mean, who's better, Casemiro or Party? Uh, they asked me before. It's, I don't know. It's a tough one. I played against Casemiro, but I've also played with Thomas. Um, I don't know. I think the. I don't know. I can't answer that. They're both quality players, you know. Ah. Where, where's, right, where, where's Declan sitting there? Yeah. Declan. Party or I, Declan? Ah, uh, Declan. Declan's unbelievable. Um, mm. I just seen. I don't know if you watched the game the other night, uh, the other day when we played West Ham, but just his intelligence, the way he breaks up play and how he travels with it, and how powerful and unbelievable. Probably one of the best in the world at what he does. So you put in Declan ahead of Casemiro. Yeah. All right. Noted. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you're gonna get a lot from the comments, Kieran. I'm not even gonna lie to That's you. You're gonna get a lot. Out. It's a massive yeah, shot, but I love it. I love that. You know what? It's, the, it's when you play with people, you agree. Because I mean, I mean, when I played, if, if someone said, "Oh, if you said who's a, a great player in your team," and you went Michael Carrick, a lot of people would raise their eyebrows and go, "Hold on," but you don't see it. You don't see it. It doesn't jump off the page to you. But when you play with people, you appreciate them in a different manner, a different way. So I can understand. Yeah, as, as defenders like me and yourself, you. You appreciate, you know, like say Michael Carrick or a Declan, um, Declan does, you know, it, it makes your job easier um, yeah. when they're just mocking everything up. But now, don't get me wrong, Casemiro, well, yeah, the trophies he's won, the Champions League, of course, is world class player. But if you're talking right now, I, I'm like, honestly, Dex incredible. Like, it's got the age just and stuff as well. Staying on this uh, theme of players, who, who's the best player you've played with? Give us a couple of, you played some big names that Joel was talking about there. Like, who's the best players? Yeah. Um, obviously, Harry. Harry Kane is, is incredible. Um, you know, I'm a big I'm a big fan of Stonesy. Like, for mm. me, yeah, he's top. Um, Koke, Atletico Madrid. Koke, yeah. Uh, great leader, great on the ball, um, top throw. Um, but my, honestly, like, I'd say Raheem Sterling as well. Like wow, I played against him and um, and I'm off to play with him and he's brilliant. But you know, you look at the England team, you see you see the talent there. You see, you know, even the ones of the World Cup, the lads on the bench. It's it's frightening, really, the the depth that we've got and in training. Is, the standard is ridiculous. Well, why why don't why don't this England team win, Sergio? Why don't they win? Yeah. Them? I see the talent, the depth you've got. Like you've everything you've said there, but what's what's held you back or what's been the whole the, the obstacle so far for you guys? Um. I think uh, 2018, you know, was against obviously Croatia and won the up, and then I think their their experience took over with Modric, with you know the players that they have in the middle of the park, and I think like we we took huge steps moving forward. But I feel like against France, I thought we I thought we were brilliant against France. Um, mm. We had great chances against them, but honestly, we are, I, I can't answer it. It's, I can't answer it. Um, you know, we're, we're playing well and it's just, you know, trying to win that first trophy, you know, trying to win mm. that first one and then I feel like the second, third and they'll all follow. But yeah, it's just getting over that line. Mm. You coming into the England squad, I'm staying with Rio's topic here. Everyone talks about the atmosphere. Gareth Southgate, you know, he's done a great job. From your perspective, what is it that you love about the uh, the environment? Honestly, I, I love meeting up with them. I think it's the atmosphere. I think that all comes from Gareth and being honest with you because 
when I first arrived there, we had so many meetings um, about what it means to represent England, um, to represent your country, um, what we've done to get into the position that we're in, and you know, and you know, at the time, um, you know, there was a lot of injuries. Players maybe not, maybe not wanting to come, but that's changed. You know, that's changed for a good few years now, and you know, the, the squad that we've got there, the staff, and the, and the staff do an incredible job there to make it a really good environment, and. Mm. Certainly, since I've been there, I've I've loved every minute of it, and you know, you, as you can see, it's not we're just saying that; we, it actually is like that when we're in camps and stuff. So, and I feel like we're all together as well, which is which is important. We're all on the same page. Do you stay connected when you leave? When you leave, like via Instagram or WhatsApp and stuff, like, do you all still speak like you know a group or anything like that? Yeah, group, yeah, like that? yeah. We we all speak. Obviously, a lot of the England lads, um, obviously the, the Manchester boys as well. They all they all meet up all the time for dinner and stuff and. That's what's good about it, you know. There's when we're having dinner and stuff at St George's, you know, you don't have, you know, physios. Everyone physios are eating with the players or the analysts. We're all just mixing, you know. It's not just the players and then the staff. It's everybody, mm. uh, the groundsmen. Um, yeah, you know, you see Gareth sitting down. You, you sit down next to him and have food, and or yeah, the, the other coaching stuff. So it's it's a real no, good. No. I, I was sitting down next to Fabio Capello and eating my steak. <laughs> it was like it just never on the cards that at all. <laughs> no, no ketchup, no butter. No, no ketchup, butter, yeah. mayonnaise, lads are going mad. They couldn't believe it. You never just sneak think, ketchup uh, and mayonnaise in your boot bag. I think it was Crouch who done an interview saying he'd taken stuff to his room or something. Biscuits mate, or I mean, something. I, I, mate, one time I remember the lads, I forget who it was who, who set it up, but like there was a little text went round, listen, come to room 453. Um, everyone's gone there. There was like a takeaway. Of McDonald's and like KFC just ordered in and just I mean, like, smugglers, the smugglers coming out of the room with it under their jumpers and that it was crazy. Crazy, like, that. we were like a bunch of fiends. That's crazy, that. I know, different crazy. times, mate. Different times. See, Kieran, let, me, let me take you to um, the move to Newcastle. I think it's probably gone better than most people have expected since the takeover. But what was your expectation when they came calling and when you signed? Yeah, it was in probably early December when I first heard about it. When obviously when uh, Eddie Howe took charge, um, and it was one of those where um, there's there's a lot of things when obviously when I when I got banned and stuff from football, and it was still um, a bit sour with me and Atletico at the time, and it was difficult behind the scenes and stuff. So that's probably. Another reason why I play came back to England as well. And then when Newcastle um, was interested, it was a risk. Of course, it was, it was a massive risk um, to come to Newcastle because they were bottom of the league. But, you know, I have no regrets. And if I believe in something, I go for it. That's the type of character I am. Um, mm. And, yeah, you know, I had good chats with the manager. I played for him before. And also the owners as well. And where they want to, you know, it was explained to me where they want to go as a club. But we didn't realise it would accelerate as fast as it is now. But, I think we've earned the right to be in the position that we're in today. So we've worked hard this season. Um, and yeah, and you know, I don't look back. I have no regrets. And I thought, why not? But let's go for it and scrap it out in a relegation fight. How has Eddie Howe gone about um, improving the culture that's at Newcastle? Because I think that's a massive part. Because you haven't made a ton of signings. But there's a yeah. lot of talk of a lot of work going on in the background. So what sort of scenes, things are you seeing that you can talk about? Um, to be honest, but, you know, I've spoke to it about a few players before I come here when obviously the, the old owners were here and, and obviously Steve Bruce, it was, you know, some of the lads were just saying things like, uh, you know, maybe the training, you know, the, the, the level, the fitness of the, the players wasn't there. But, you know, obviously Eddie's come in, the gaffer's come in and he's one of the type of managers where he needs to know everything about you. Um, you know, he, he brings the right characters into the club, which he has done uh, since I've been here. And, you know, he's all about the togetherness as a group. And, you know, he's, he's one of those managers where, you know, fitness-wise, I feel like we're probably one of the fittest teams in the league. And he's, and he's, he's big on that as well, uh, about outrunning opponents and stuff. But, you know, a top-quality manager, um, still very young and you know, unbelievable future ahead. No, but you, know, you, know, final. you guys, you guys, you got, I don't know exactly where I was going to go, Steve, the cup final. But getting to that has been a huge achievement, given, like you said, you signed when they were bottom of the league. You could never have imagined that, no matter how much you dreamed, I don't think. And it's been testament to you guys and the hard work. But 
Do you think you guys can win it? I mean, you're obviously going to say yes, but how do you go about that with this Man United team and what are they like in comparison to before you got there? Yeah, I think, you know, from last year till now, we took massive steps. And and again, I feel like we've earned the right to be here. Obviously, yeah, you have to try and beat everybody's in front of you. But yeah, we, we all know it's going to be a tough game against Man United. You know, you see the form recently under them. You know, Marcus is on fire and everyone is. But we know it's going to be a tough game, but we believe we can win. Um, we have to go in with that winning mindset. You know, there's no point turning up and, you know, just because it's Man United, we, we know they're a huge club with unbelievable players, but we need to believe, and we, and we do. Mm. We certainly believe that we can go to Wembley and beat Man United to win the trophy. So that that's the mindset that we're going to have to have if we're going to win. Um, but yeah, we, we have to be ready. We have to be, you know, because they're a good team. You know, you see, you see the past, since the, the World Cup break, they've been unbelievable. Mm. Do you see yourself, sorry Steve, sorry Steve, Steve, Steve. It's just, it's going on a point about Newcastle and back to what Joel was saying when you went there, we thought there was going to be an influx of massive players, big signings, do you see that day happening in, in a window coming up? Um, I feel like they've done, they, they took the right steps in the sense of which characters they brought in when we was in the relegation fight, um, you know, good characters, you know, good around the place, no egos in our dressing room, um, but yeah, like you said, I think you know, Dan Ashworth done, done a great job, you know, I've known Dan for many years and I think, um, you know, it depends where we, obviously where we finish and, and stuff like this, but I don't know, it's a tough question to ask really. If it's not all about going spending, I don't think about 80 million on a play. It has to be the right player, the right right character for this dressing room and, mm. you know, the manager's big on that, you know, you have to, you have to be the right character to be in our team. Um, and yeah, I don't know, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. So, so you're, you're giving this talk about the right characters, etc. You're at training, Newcastle, every day. Who's giving you a hard time? Who are you... A hard time and also, who are you looking at thinking, wow, this player's class, man. Anyone expected? I think Callum Wilson gives me a hard time every day. He's really? just non-stop. Like, he's just a bubbly guy, do you know what I mean? He's, but he doesn't shut up, honestly, every day. Great character. <laughs> But I think the one player is Joe Linton. Um, honestly, the, he's, he, he, I play with a lot of like South Americans you know, over the years and he's proper like 100% in training every day and unbelievable player, absolute machine. Um, mm. And the turnaround in his career from what I've heard before the takeover until now is remarkable. Um, but what a player he is. Mm. Yeah, what's he having for breakfast? <laughs> he's an animal, isn't he? he's a big, he's a big lad. Um, yeah, he's got an unbelievable future ahead of him, Joel Linton. Yeah, yeah go on then. Final, you against Marcus Rashford. That's what's yeah, going to be the tide, isn't it? It's going to be a tough battle. Um, you know, I'm relishing the challenge to play against him. Um, you know, I know his strengths, but you know, it's it's, it's a one-off game. Um, I know, I know, I'm going to be in, in in for a battle, tough day. So I need to be every single second. I need to be alert. I need to be switched on because it's going to be a good battle. We've had it many times in training. Um, I, how but, do you stop someone like Marcus who's in that form? Yeah, and, and like yeah. Do you, do you go and get right tight up against him. Don't make sure he gets his keeps his back to goal. Or do you think you know what? With a space behind me, I've got to give myself a yard or two. Yeah, it's, it's going to be important. Um, it's about the the areas of the pitch where when I can get tight, when I just need to, to stand off. But I can't be worrying about him. I need to make him chase me going back to his goal. Um, I need to be on the front foot. I need to be, I need to be positive in my, in my thinking about, you know, pushing back. I need to keep him pinned back as much as I can. Um, so he's not a threat near our goal. But that's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But I'll do everything I can to, to make him follow me and track me back. Just on that point as well, Kieran, it's weird, isn't it? When you was at, I don't know, when you was a kid growing up at Man City, when you was at Burnley, etc., maybe even at Spurs to a certain extent, and someone would have said to you about the inform winger in the Premier League, how are you going to combat and you go, right, I'll defend, I'll get, maybe call someone else to help. Now you're talking about, actually, I'm going to make him run the other way and attack yeah. and be my first form of defence. Talk us through how the right back positions evolved in your time, in your career. I feel like now, I think more like, Danny Alves really set it off his attack attack thinking. And I think that's where you lose track sometimes about the most important job is to defend. Um, 
and I go back to Tottenham, that's where I fell into that trap where I was just forward, forward, forward. But I think now it's all about um, the position of when you can go because when you're playing against someone like Marcus, you can't you can't gamble because if, if you even it's all about yards, it's all about yardage, and if you take a, a few extra yards uh, going forward, he'll exploit you in behind. He'll exploit you. And it's all about communication with the centre half because it's always good to have that relationship and that communication so he knows when I'm going to go so he can cover me. Um, if you play two sixes, you know, they can cover for you, but it's all about timing. And if you get the wrong timing, it only takes a split second for someone like Marcus to hurt you. Mm. Oh, man. Listen, I want to get it down to the best players that you've played with. Okay, so we do this segment. It's top five, five aside team, no okay. goalkeeper. Let us know your top five. <laughs> okay, um, I would go um, John Stones, Musa Dembele. Musa yeah, Dembele, his name always comes up. Talk us why. Best player I've ever played with. Um, what? Yeah, you know, we played with Harry Kane, Suarez, all these guys. Yeah, yeah no, Musa Dembele. Um, <laughs> obviously, I put Harry Kane in that bracket, but for me, Musa, because he's an absolute magician. Um, just absolutely frightening, real, honestly, with the ball, without the ball. Wow. He had everything. He had absolutely everything. Um, incredible. What, st what stopped him going completely to the top and being like the man? <laughs> honestly, these, the, I've asked him this so many times when I played with him in the dressing room. Um, I just don't he could have played for any club in the world if he wanted to take that if he just pushed himself more I'm not saying he didn't but I don't understand how he didn't play for Real Madrid Barcelona or one of the top clubs in Europe wow. I, I don't I don't understand he was that good Musa he was wow. incredible um, yeah. Musa um, I would go um, I'd go Koke go Koke um, I would go say Harry Kane at top is that four yeah that's four, four yeah. yeah you need one more um, I've got to go um, I've got to go Raz I've got to go Raz Raz is uh, Raz is Friday what is it about Raheem because I've I've yeah. I've had the chance. I keep dropping this in whenever I can I've had the chance to see you guys train a couple of times at yeah, open mm. training sessions and he is frightening, man. I yeah. said the best two players that I'd seen on the day, but well, the days that I've been, has always been Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling. But what is it about him that you think makes him so great? Joe, you said he weren't world class. I remember. Nah, no, that was, I said Son weren't world class. Did I not? Sonny. No, it was me that said Sterling's not world class and I completely stand by my <laughs> <laughs> You can see the type of debates we have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think is, is, um, his sharpness, the you know, he's given me uh, Torrey to hide a couple of times, especially in the Champions League. Um, we played him when I was at Tottenham. He's just uh, with and without the ball, he's so sharp, he's so intelligent. And the numbers he racks up as well when he was at City was, I don't think he's spoken mm. enough about the amount of goals that he got on a consistent, on a consistent basis over the years. I don't really Steve, Steve haven't seen them, Steve hasn't yeah. spoken about them or seen them. <laughs> you know, like Sonny's another one, human son at Tottenham. Frightening. Um, obviously, you know, he didn't say Raheem's finishing. He just said Raheem's numbers, didn't he? Right. Okay. No. Nah, no further nah, questions, Your Honour. No, 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 no. Because he Raheem have the numbers about the finishing. Exactly. Thank you, Trip. Tell him, man. Not accurate, though, is it? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> like Raheem's Raheem. finishing. It doesn't matter how you put the ball in the back of the net. As long as they go in there. Yeah. Have you seen his numbers, Steve? They do. Have you seen his numbers at City? He must be frightened. Don't, don't make me pull out a shot chart for you and show how many ah, misses. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Carry on, Kieran. He's done his yeah, team. That's no, the five side team. I love that. Yeah, he's, he's, he's top quality. He's top quality player. Wow. He's top and, and who would you have as manager? Poch, Simeone, Sean that's Dyche, <laughs> Eddie Howe. Uh, Gareth Southgate. Simeone. Simeone. Simeone out of um, closer by, yeah, Eddie Howe. He wants to keep that number, two, number the right back slot his own for the next five years, doesn't he? Look, <laughs> <laughs> you got it when you get to 32. Once you get to 32, you need to do everything you can. 
You need to be on. Uh, how was your body? Because I remember that. How was, how was your, my body started shutting down, man. How was your body? And how did you stay on, on top of it all? Do you know what? My body's actually feeling really good. I feel like I'm... I know I'm 32, but I feel... You know, I've been, I've been walking off over since I arrived at Newcastle after games feeling, feeling you know, really good. Um, but I feel like maybe, I don't know, mentally did go going to Spain because it was maybe the slower league and maybe that benefited me. I'm not too sure. Um, did you diet? Sure, like, yeah, yeah, I diet, you know, like um, I have like a, a like a chef and stuff. And it's important like coming into like today, uh, it's our day off, but I'm in, you know, ice bath, massage, recover. Love um, just doing everything you can really, you know, to, um, to get What did you say? You've got a chef? Yeah, I've got a chef, yeah. Love that. So you've yeah. got, have you built a little team around yourself? You've got your own physio, your own doctor, maybe? No, not my own physio. No, not my own physio. I come, I come in air training to get my, uh, my treatment. It's just a chef, really, just um, for my diet. Um, yeah, just try and eat the right things. Um, do everything I can, really, to, yeah, maybe perform. Uh, keep me mm. fresh, really, and do everything I can, because as soon as you get to 32 now, you need to you need to do everything you can to, to keep going for as long as you can. And that's all I'm trying to do. Mm, love it. Yeah, nice. Well, listen, uh, Kieran, man, really love, love speaking no, to you, Thanks for having me. Thank you. Having you on. I really good appreciate it. Not too much good luck in the League Cup. Good luck in the League. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate yeah. it. I'm sure I'll see you there anyway. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, mate. Thank Top you, guys. Man. I really appreciate it for having me on. Thank no, you. Thank man. you.